Thank you, Admiral. And now the aforementioned Cherry Tsutsumita, the executive director of the Memorial Foundation, herself once interned during World War II. Please welcome Cherry. Today, I'd like to pay some tribute to a group that perhaps is often ignored, and that is the many women who during World War II, while our men were fighting, while our fathers were interned, held together our families. And those of us who are Japanese know that the honorific we use for them is that they are the behind the scene Oksans. And so today I'd like to give a little tribute to the Oksans of the world. One of my strongest memories as I remember the war years is how one day I was coming home from school and one of my girlfriends said, well, you know, you Japs deserve it. I just saw them take your father away. And I really didn't believe it, but when I went home, surely enough, my father had been taken from us. And it wasn't until the war was almost over that he was returned to us. But during that time when all of our fathers were gone, and all of the time when our brothers were leaving for war, it was the women who tried to say, don't worry, it's going to be OK. And then at night, I would hear them sleeping alone and crying themselves to sleep. And I thought to myself that courage comes in many forms. You know, it isn't just picking up a sword or an arrow or whatever. It means being able to give of yourself in a way that holds a community and a family together. And I remember something else. I remember having Eleanor Roosevelt coming to Gila Rivers when we were still in the height of the war. And all of us saw her in her beautiful silk blouse and her little hat and saying to us, I want you to know that we are really thinking of you. And somehow, in that time, this woman's compassion and her willingness to come to this for forgotten and forlorn desert community that we call these camps. Somehow she showed a compassion and she reassured us that someone in a high place was remembering us when many people had abandoned us, including her husband who was then the President of the United States. When my father was finally returned to us, it was a very happy day and ironically it did happen on Thanksgiving Day. And he said to us, you know, it's really important to believe in what you truly want and it is important to even die for what you truly believe. Anybody could die for their country, but it is equally important to live for your country. And so all of us felt that, you know, really it was very important for us to do anything we could to make this a greater nation. By the time that I grew older, the civil rights movement had just begun and we saw Martin Luther King and we began to realize that this nation was strong not in spite of its diversity, but because of its diversity. And I am so proud to see that even our military with General Shinseki is showing how the military itself has demonstrated to us that this is a nation that is strengthened by our diversity. And so on this day, when we celebrate what our nation is all about, and when I see so many of our colleagues out there, and when I am so proud that we're bringing up a generation of women who, like Ann Curry, are going to be leaders forever and ever and ever in the broadcasting field, I say, Thank you very, very much, all of you, for coming, and let's celebrate. Thank you very much. Cherry, I hope you're very good at predicting the future. <laughs> Thank you very much for your comments. They were very touching, and it was good to hear from someone who specifically had experienced the camps. And 